Dear Reverend Fathers, Dear Reverend Sisters, My dear Seminarians, Today, on the 30th of July, we also keep the memory of Saint Peter Chrysologus, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. Way back in the year 380, he was born, was appointed Bishop of Ravenna in Italy and he is much known for his inspiring homilies and writings. As seminarians, you have to look to the excellent example for the fathers of the church. I have a book titled 30 Doctors of the Church. Learning the sacred doctrine every day of your life. Preaching to the people writing that people may read them. That is also a special occasion. May Saint Peter Chrysologus intercede for you and me. In today's office of readings, he says something about the incarnation of the Lord. In the process, he says, the Lord respects you, honors you. Why don't you respect yourself? That sentence struck me. Sometimes we fail because of low self-esteem. When the Lord loves us, honors us, why can't we respond to him with all our energy? Why can't we produce more fruits according to the best of our ability? That is the question. We read in the prophet Isaiah, You are precious and honored in my eyes and I love you. Isaiah 43rd chapter. You are precious and honored in my eyes and I love you. I used to write these words as autograph for so many people who came to me those days. Secondly, today's gospel in a way speaks about our responsibility to be fruitful. Already we heard about the parable of the wheat and the weed, or the wheat and the darn, as it is called. The master allows both to grow until the time of harvest. There will be judgment, as we read yesterday, in number 22 of that uh, indiction bull of Holy Father Francis. Space non confundit. Hope does not disappoint. There will be judgment, personal judgment and collective judgment. You have to answer for each of your deed. For all that you did, Holy Father says, also for all the good that you did not do. In this number, he also quotes Matthew 25th chapter, I was hungry, you did not feed me. I was thirsty, you did not give me to drink. The whole passage is quoted. There will be judgment. We should be held accountable. Sometimes our lack of accountability 
may not be noticed by our superiors, but God notices. I have given you so much life, good family, formation, opportunity, good climate. What have you done? The Lord will ask us on the last day. I could have given all these to other people, but you have not made much of all the gifts that I have given to you. Every day we have to show something before the Lord. Lord, this is what I have learned. This is what I have produced. There is judgment. At the same time, the Lord is patient with people who have not produced sufficiently. You know the parable in Luke chapter 13, for three years I am looking for fruits. It has not produced any. I want to cut it off. But the servant says, no, leave one more year. Not three years, seven years, eighteen years, sixty years with some of us. The Lord is looking for fruit. It is high time that we produce fruits. And be bold enough to encounter the Lord of Judgment. At the same time, the Lord is patient with those who have not produced fruit. He knows. But it is not for you and me to condemn those who have not produced fruit, whom in your judgment are bad. In the parable, the weed can never turn into wheat. But in life, the weeds, the bad people can always become better. Don't condemn anybody. Don't judge your brothers and sisters as good for nothing. Respect them, honor them. The Lord honors them. The Lord is patient with them. Why are you impatient? And drop the whole world as useless. We should not do it. I also want to go to today's first reading, beautiful, in the light of what we reflected yesterday also. Chapter 14 of the prophet Jeremiah. The, the passage begins with Jeremiah weeping, shedding tears profusely. We can't keep quiet when our brothers and sisters are suffering. We have to join them in weeping with them and for them. Our heart must become more and more soft and gentle. What is the fruit of our prayer life? Morning prayer, meditation, evening prayer, midday prayer, all these prayers must make us more and more soft and gentle that we don't become any more hard-hearted. Jeremiah weeps, looking at what is happening to the people. They sinned. He did not sin much. All are suffering, famine, murder, everywhere problems. He is praying in response to the suffering, our solidarity with the people and our praying with them and for them, whether they prayed or not, Lord have mercy on us today. Beautiful prayer. Will you forget us? Lord save my people. Solidarity. Praying. That's what is there. Amaya. Have mercy on us. All prophets must pray for God's mercy. All prophets must intercede for the people. Often seminarians, mothers tell me, why do you want your son to become a priest? Some of the mothers always respond, Father, Bishop, we need someone to pray for the family, you know. Beautiful answer. Praying for God's mercy. Praying for the family. Great intercessors. In the footsteps of Abraham, Moses, Jeremiah, we are all called to be. Standing close to the cross of Jesus, we read, 
John's Gospel, 19th chapter, 25th verse, standing close. My dear brothers and sisters, I myself did not understand why we say in the prayer, Hail Mary. Pray for us at the hour of our death, we say. Mary was standing close to Jesus at the time of his death. She consoled him, strengthened him by her presence. Mother Mary, be with me when I am going to die. I am dying sometimes every day, many deaths. Mother Mary, be close to me. Then only I appreciate that Hail Mary prayer all the more. We have to stand close to Jesus. Stand close to the suffering Jesus in our midst. So many brothers and sisters. That is our vocation. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord respects us, honors us. Let us respect ourselves. Let us remember that we have to give account for all the gifts we have received from the Lord. Let us remember not to condemn anybody. The Lord loves them. Lord is patient with them. Let us be in solidarity with the suffering humanity. Let us pray for our families, pray for the diocese, pray for the church. Let us continue our pilgrimage of faith by standing close like Mary to those who are suffering. Amen. <laughs>